you welcome to my kitchen and I have to bring your attention to an article that I found today while I was doing my daily research and reading um, and as you can see it is on the natural news website I will put a link to the article but it is short enough that I'm actually going to read it to you uh, myself the um, the implications of this particular article are great they are far-reaching and if you don't think that this will happen in an SHTF, you are sorely mistaken. And it will be tenfold. Um, the title of the article is Family Orchard Ransacked by Hungry Mobs After Owners Generously Offer Undersized Peach Crop Free to Public. And this was uh, originally posted yesterday on the Natural News website. Of course, that's Mike Adams' website. And I'm going to read the article to you now. A Colorado fruit orchard was ransacked by locals recently after its generous owners decided to open up their private peach grove to the public for a free picking. Dawn and Marilyn Shanneman were horrified to learn that their benevolent efforts to, sav to salvage an undersized peach crop resulted in, it in what can only be described as utter savagery by the lowest members of society, who saw fit to harass the family and even damage their property after their peaches had all been picked. The Shanamans recently took ownership of Rancho Fruta, a fruit and vegetable farm located in Palisade, Colorado, a town just east of Grand Junction. Because their first season's crop of peaches was too small to sell on market, the Shanamans decided out of the goodness of their hearts to open up the orchard to the public and allow free peach pickings in order to prevent the undersized crop from going to waste. After a local news outlet ran a story about free peaches, however, many area residents and others began showing up in mass at the orchard both day and night to pick the fruit, with some people literally pounding on the Shanaman's front door late at night demanding access to the orchard. Within just a few days of the announcement, all the peaches were gone, but that did not stop some people from continuing to harass the family and destroy their property. At first, people were pretty respectful, but then there was a huge mass and it began spiraling downhill, said Marilyn to the Sentinel, adding that some people actually turned violent upon learning that all the peaches had already been picked. One person reportedly threw rocks at the Shanaman's house, while others actually drove their vehicles into the orchard, damaging trees and breaking pipes. Besides damaging the family's personal property and private orchard, many of these same brutes also broke into a nearby neighbor's property to pick fruit from their orchard, which was obviously not a part of the fruit picking. Even after the Shanamans put up signs that the crop had already been picked and that no trespassing was allowed, some people continued to wreak havoc on their property. It cost us a lot to give away free peaches, added Marilyn, noting that the cost of replacing the damaged pipes was more than the family received in donations for the free peaches. I'm just really disappointed 90% of those who came were great, but that the other 10% was just crazy she lamented, quipping about how there will be no more peach giveaways at Rancho Fruta in the future. I wanted to bring this to your attention. Um, I actually emailed this link to my friend Kat's Cradle, who then called me and said, you have to do a video about this. And you know, she's right. The more people who understand that this happened in a time when um, we have law and order and we have civilized society, so to speak. What do you think will happen? In the event something dire happens, what happens if the shit does hit the fan, right? And people who have food are going to be targets because people who don't have food, who did not prepare, and for those of you who were in attendance or listened to the rebroadcast of the Homestead Honey Hour from the other night, and we talked about the zombie phenomenon, and I kind of alluded to the fact that my theory was that the zombies aren't dead at all, that the zombies are actually the people who are unprepared. The, pe the zombies are the ones who will knock on your door, be it friend, foe, neighbor, family member, um, and they will expect you to help them um, because a lot of people are benefiting from entitlement programs. A lot of people are on food stamps. What do you think happens when the government collapses or the economy collapses and they ain't no money for anybody? What happens then? Then people get desperate. They say that, you know, people will start killing each other for food after three days in a, in a bad situation. Um, there are a lot of other things that people will resort to. Um, I have 
people who tell me, oh, that's okay, I'm just going to go hunting and I'll eat squirrel and rabbit and deer or whatever. That's right, you, you can. Eventually, those particular uh, herds are going to be depleted as well because you're not the only one who's got that idea. Um, peaches and nuts and apples and any place where you live that produces any kind of food on a broad scale. Some farm to mark, you know, uh, market farms that that produce for farmers markets or for local groceries or what have you. They'll be decimated in hours or, you know, days. I, I don't know. These people in a time of civilized existence took something so nice. I mean, these people really thought they were doing a good thing. They didn't want the peaches that they grew this year to go to waste, even though they couldn't sell them at market, because there are standards that they have to meet. They really thought they were doing a good thing, and in, in the end, it ended up biting them. And it's horrible because, you know, now these people, they don't want to help anymore because of how they were treated. Um, you know, damage was done to their crops, damage was done to their property, and all of this in a time of law and order, rule of law, and civilized society. The lights go out for three days, folks, and you know what? It's going to be ugly. Lights go out for an extended period of time, and it's going to be horrific. This happening now, this is nothing. I want you really all to think about this, you know? Cat's Cradle was really, really distressed after she read this article. And I have to say, I was too. I read it out loud to my husband. Rick and I, we know it's not going to be easy or pretty. And are we really ready? We talked about that too. Are we really prepared for what may happen? So anyway, I'm going to leave the link below. I'm going to let you go read it for yourself. I'm going to let you share it with others. Please do. Post it to your Facebook page. Get it out on Twitter. I don't care what you do. For those of you who don't participate in those kind of things, that's okay. Just read it for yourself and share it with your family. I know you're going to tell me you've got people who won't listen. So do I. It doesn't matter. As long as you tell them, you plant the seed. All we can do is plant the seed. We can't make it grow. The more we talk about it, that's watering that seed. Eventually, they're going to come around. Even if it's too late, they're still going to come around. So, I hope you read it. I hope you love it. Until next time, I'll see ya.